Hi, I'm Vanshika Bhardwaj and I'm a graduate student at North Carolina State University's Institute for Advanced Analytics. And I'm here today with Abad Irfan, who graduated with an MS in Data Science from University of Pennsylvania and now works as a data scientist at IBM. So, um, Abad, if you can start by giving us a peek of what you do in your role as a data scientist at IBM mm -hmm. and what does a typical day on the job look like for you? Yeah, sounds good. Thanks for the introduction. So I joined IBM as a data scientist last year. I'm part of the pricing team in the chief analytics office. So mm -hmm. it's basically an internal team. Um, our clients are people in IBM themselves. And so if there's any team across IBM that needs some sort of data science solutions uh, to implement, we are sort of the, the go-to team for that. And as part of the pricing team, uh, we work directly with salespeople and sellers to optimize pricing they give uh, to their clients. So mm -hmm. when sellers create a quote, there's obviously a price on that quote, right? right? And so the question is, what's the most optimized price they can give to that particular client? And so mm -hmm. what our team does is that we look at all information. We look at what client it is, what industry they're in, um, what product we're selling them, what's been our past relationship with the client, right? All these factors. And we mm -hmm. sort of give them a final optimal price that we think um, will maximize expected revenue. And so, yeah, that's the sort of uh, main work I do as part of the pricing team. Uh, going off of that, um, what do you think are like three words which best describe like a data scientist? Three words that best describe? Um, let's see. Curious. Uh, I want to say effective communicator because a lot of times you have to communicate your results to a non-technical audience. And so you right. have to know what sort of words and vocabulary to use and not get too bogged mm -hmm. down in details. So right. yeah, curious, effective communicator. And the third one is, I guess, like identifying patterns maybe, right? Being good at, okay. yeah, being good at when you're seeing data, just figuring out what the relationship between features are, um, mm -hmm. what is the best way to use a particular feature, stuff like that. And I think right. that only comes with experience, right? Right. So, yeah. I think that ties that, that, that ties with curiosity part too. Like mm -hmm. you're curious yeah. about what your data looks like yeah. and what uh, conclusions can you make out of it. Yeah, and yeah, that's definitely. why that's why the role is actually called data scientist because you feel like mm -hmm. you're a scientist. You're just doing right. all these experiments. Of data. And, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. It's not like yeah. you're given a problem and you know the solution. You have to just do a lot of research mm -hmm. and figure and out the solution your yourself. The solution. Yeah. Now I will uh, like to go over some uh, questions that you might deal with like on a day-to-day -day basis. Mm -hmm. um, how do you communicate complex data findings to like a non-technical uh, stakeholder? Yeah. So the main thing is not to get too bogged down on details, right? So let's say you're explaining... Uh, your machine learning model, right? And it's, let's say it's a random forest, right? You mm -hmm. don't have to explain to them how a random forest actually works, right? You just have to right. say that we have a model that learns from our training data, that given mm -hmm. all these factors, it produces an optimal output, right? So you have to right. focus more on the results and the metrics instead of the actual technique itself. And obviously, if they have questions, you can go sort of more deeper into the explanations, mm -hmm. but you don't have to go too in depth on the mathematics. You have to figure out on what the business value you're generating is, what the metrics look like, because at the end of the day, the stakeholders care about what sort of expected benefit or dollar value your solution is bringing, right? Uh, what's, right the, what's the increase in revenue you can bring with this new solution? Mm -hmm. So you have right. to sort of focus more on the business value of your project instead of mm -hmm. talking about what parameter you used to tune your random forest or something mm -hmm. else, right? Because, yeah, yeah because mm -hmm. the stakeholders don't really care about that all. In the end, all that matters is, right. like I said, the business value. What are you getting out mm -hmm. of it? Yeah, yeah the revenue yeah. that they're mm -hmm. generating out of it. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Um, now that you've been working as a data scientist for a while and you've even interned um, mm -hmm. as a data scientist, what is like a valuable like lesson you've, you've learned from like failed data projects? You might have had some of them. Mm -hmm. So um, what did you learn or something like, you keep learning on a day-to-day basis? I think it's probably just understanding the structure and format of the raw data, right? Mm -hmm. So I remember there was this one 
exploratory analysis I was doing where I had to sort of merge two different data sources. Mm-hmm. And I think there was what I didn't consider was data leakage, right? So I was right. essentially when I was trying to train the data, I was looking at future data. And right. uh, so that I didn't consider that when I was uh, looking at the raw data, right? So I think you need to really understand where your raw data is coming from, how the people are populating that data source mm-hmm. before you even start looking at pre-processing and filtering and analysis and all that sort of stuff. So you shouldn't, like as soon as you get your hands on a new set of data, you shouldn't like jump right into it mm-hmm. and start doing modeling and all that no. stuff. First, try to right. understand how that data is generated, where it's coming from, um, how the people are actually populating it. Because a lot of times, um, at least the data we see, some sellers just mm-hmm enter random values, right? Mm -hmm. So you have to sort of consider that as well, whether some values in this column are not related to data at all and they're just randomly populated. So there are a lot of different things to look Mm -hmm. at, but yeah, um, the main, main, um, I guess, learning I've had is that understand where your data is coming from and how it's generated. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, -hmm. Yeah, I think that's one thing that even our uh, faculties tell us is that, it don't jump to modeling definitely but yeah. from what you said also consider where and be mindful where your data is coming from like pre-processing mm-hmm. and really knowing uh what where your data is uh, coming yeah. from yeah yeah especially the data generation process right you need to Correct. if you have access to a database you can see the data but you need to know how that was entered and how it's being entered into the database itself like what right what tool are other people using that's mm-hmm. uh, populating the database so that's also something yeah. Yeah, you need to figure out. Yeah, I think that's really uh, valuable advice and we mm-hmm. should keep that in mind. Yeah. How do you balance the need for ac- accuracy with the need for efficiency in your analysis? Like, because yeah. we need accuracy and we need efficiency both. Yeah. Like, what is the balance? Yeah, I think um, that's a great question because a lot of times if you're... So the, one of the main metrics we look at is AUC for our classification mm-hmm. model. And Mm -hmm. sometimes we may come up with a new technique or some new hyperparameters that raise the AUC by, let's say, one percentage point or two percentage points, right? Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, the whole deployment for that, the whole um, process change for that may not be worth it, right? So we have to look at other metrics as well, especially business value metrics. So something we look at is revenue realization rate, uh, which is sort of what percentage of revenue of the non-discounted prices are we capturing. So that's one business metric we look at as well. And then we also look at how much the expected revenue is increased from um, certain model change. So for us, those business value metrics are much more important than our data science metrics. So even mm-hmm. if there's a change to the model that increases our AUC by uh, one to two percentage points or increases the F1 score by two or three points, if in the end our business value metrics are pretty much the same, we don't think it's worth it to implement uh, that change in our model. Okay. So yeah, at the end of the day, I'd say our business metrics are have much more value than our data science metrics. And mm-hmm. you have to look at trade-offs, right? So mm-hmm. you don't need to like optimize every single part of your model. No. And how do we keep up with those like the const- like constant inv- advancements? How do you su- uh, like what are your suggestions that we as a as students of data science keep up with it? Yeah, I think you always you always have to keep learning. So one thing I personally mm-hmm. do is I've signed up to a lot of newsletters that um, have like latest data science papers or latest advancements in machine learning or whatever. So you just have to stay up to date, like sign up for newsletters, sign up for maybe some courses that are teaching these new concepts. So mm-hmm. yeah, you have to do it yourself. No one's going to come and tell you that, oh, there's this new solution. Um, right. in machine learning that's come out, you have to figure it out yourself and you have to mm-hmm. sort of keep learning um, because, yeah, the motivation has to be there because if mm-hmm. you're if you're going to use the same skills you are five years from now, they're not going to be relevant. So you always have mm-hmm. to be up to date. But yeah, for me personally, I've signed up to a bunch of different newsletters. Okay. Uh, I think that brings us to the end of the um, mm-hmm. session today. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much, Alag, for... Uh, joining in and helping us out as uh, mm-hmm. uh, because we're aspiring data scientists. So. No, thanks for having me. And I, I had a, fun, a lot of fun answering all these questions. So yeah, okay. this was really Thank interesting. You. Mm-hmm. Thank you, yeah.